Five minutes of questions. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, let me just remind everyone in this room and this committee that the vaccines that we have uh, touted numerous times on both sides of the aisle were developed under the Trump administration and were available uh, in November of uh, 2020. Uh, let me also say, Ms. Weingarten, on not April... For, not for teachers. On, uh, Ms. Weingarten, it, uh, I I'm recall sorry. very distinctly and was in those uh, hearings as the teachers' union lobbied uh, in order to get teachers moved to the front of the line for vaccines. On April 19, 2023, your counsel on your behalf sent the select subcommittee a 10-page letter attempting to rebut previous work on this subcommittee and statements made in previous letters. I'm sure other members will touch on various aspects of these claims, but I want to focus on one in particular. On page four of your letter, you roundabout say that the American Federation of Teachers has scientific expertise and is therefore well positioned to opine on science-based school guidance. So on your science-based expertise, can you tell me that were you aware of publications by the American Journal of Pediatrics uh, in the summer of 2020 that indicated that children had very little to no transmission of COVID-19. Um, I presented that to our state legislature as a state senator for us to reopen schools in Iowa, which we reopened uh, half and half uh, in the um, August of 2020. Did your scientific experts that you said during this hearing, um, did your scientific experts present to you that as of June of 2020, among 1.8 million children in this age group. Do you know how many died from COVID? So sitting here right now today, um, doctor, I don't know how many died. I don't have that number in my head. Yeah, zero. I do know. On July 20th, 2020, um, Swedish and Finnish public health agencies issued a public report comparing the two countries, concluding that Closure or not of schools has little, if any, impact on the number of laboratory-confirmed cases in school-aged children. Did your scientific experts provide that data to you? Well, um, doctor or, or um, representative, what we were presented with was documentation, including from the um, Pediatricians Association and including from doctors like Dr. Kelly Henning, um, who worked... Um, so did they present you data that showed children were of very low transmission, very low risk of death? We knew that children... Did they present to you data from other countries that showed continuing in-person schooling was, in fact, safe for children and safe for teachers? Well, when, we were presented with data, thank God, that showed that kids were less had less COVID. Yeah, and COVID had was less, not influenza, and I can certainly but understand education. No, 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 we totally, we totally uh, know it was fantastic. I reclaim thank my God. time, ma'am. I'm sorry. I understand that, you know, uh, the education system has a great deal of expertise with influenza and the challenges of influenza and the contagiousness among children. However, influenza is not COVID. Did your experts present to you? August 7, 2020, the CDC published an MMWR study on COVID net data from March 1, 2020 to July 25, 2020, which clearly established the low risk to American children. In the analysis, children comprised less than 0.1% of hospitalizations and 0.0005% of associated COVID-19 mortality. The data Were, did your experts present that data to you to be able to develop your assessment for whether or not schools should reopen. So, may I answer? I'm waiting. So, what our experts showed us, and that's why I was giving you the names of our experts, is that they showed us the two reports, the one from Massachusetts and the one from Wisconsin, and we also saw the reports from the other countries, I don't know if I saw all of them that you saw, that showed that when you had this layered mitigation, there was much less transmission in schools. I think that, that, that we saw, and that's part of the reason why we were confident that if we had the layered mitigation, the layered that mitigation we was could in relationship with influenza, and I'd say that uh, perhaps well, in, there the, was a in the future we could study. get we could get different experts. But because what I'm doing is, as a physician, as seven physicians on this panel, 
challenging what your experts said. And, uh, and well, as look, we continue to learn from COVID-19, what the I medical didn't... facts were, okay. um, you know, these facts are non-negotiable, ma'am. The fact is, schools were relatively safe places for both students and educators. Well, they were. These are scientific questions that a scientific organization should be able to study and answer. And the ATF is not, AFT is not a scientific organization. Not only am I a doctor, I'm a former director of the State Department of Public Health, and I know how important it is to work with stakeholders to bring people to consensus. Uh, but I would say that the AFT was out of its league in this uh, regard. Um, so the, the effect on children has been vast, and to have no remorse on closing schools and keeping them closed for the length of the time is unconscionable. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I yield back.